New Year. Isn't it nice to have the world all back to normal? I hope everybody had a great holiday season, but yours truly is thrilled that it's finally fucking over. Holidays are just crazy. But anyway, as you saw in the intro, there is a ton of stuff to talk about, and I really don't have a whole lot of time to talk about it, so I'm going to cram as much as I can here in a relatively short amount of time, but I want to kick off talking about Old School Raw a little bit. You know, the show was kind of strange to me. It got off to a terrible start, and there were actually a few things on the show that kind of irritated me, but uh, Jerry Lawler had some sort of a health scare uh, earlier on in the day. Luckily, it turns out it was nothing, but there was a lot of worry that it might have something to do with his heart. Apparently, he was vomiting. They made him go to the hospital. He was going to miss the show and all this. It was pretty scary. So then you turn on Raw, and the WWE uses this as a reason to promote the stupid app. Like, seriously? I don't get mad about too many things like that, and this really doesn't bother me either, but it's like, really? Come on. And one thing that really pissed me off is fucking Ryback. You know, God damn it, WWE. There's certain things that just really irk me, and one of the things that has always bothered me for a long time is the long running rib on Lillian Garcia and how WWE constantly makes reference to her horse face. You know, Lillian Garcia is a beautiful woman. I find this particular rib rude and disrespectful and flat out mean. I mean, Triple H has even participated in this, calling her a horse face. Triple H, of all people, gonna call somebody else a horse face. You might want to look in the mirror yourself there, sport. And if Lillian has no problem with it, it's cool, it's typical wrestling ribbing, they're all family, they're allowed to do shit like that to each other, then fine, I'm in no position to complain about it. But for somebody like me who's always loved Lillian Garcia so much, I've always thought she was such a sweetheart, and such a good employee and a great ring announcer. I mean, if they want to rib the woman, just make fun of her for being a shitty singer or not selling any records or something like that. But I think when they make fun of somebody's physical appearance like that, the way Vince McMahon mocked JR's Bell's Posse and all the other horrible things that they have done to people, for some reason I just don't understand and I don't like it at all uh, that they shit on Lillian and play this horrible mean rib on her. I guess it's better than having a fucking piece of shit in your submarine sandwich, but still, I don't like it and I want to slap anybody that participates in this rib. Fuck you, Ryback, even though I know you were told to say it. Whoever told you to say it, fuck you too. Fuck the both of you. By this point, I'm so irritated that I took it a little bit too far when I laugh at the WWE for blaming the referee uh, for the botched finish of the Great Khali and Sandow match from last week. You know, when you have like fucking seven foot seven guys in the ring, you just can't do shit to them. You can't do roll-ups and fucking wrestling moves. It doesn't look right, and the match was fucking terrible, and it's nobody's fault. Sandow's in there with a fucking moose. You can't do anything to a fucking moose. And I don't even think the WWE was being racist or anything like that, but after the first two disrespectful things they did on the show, by that point, I was reading way too much into everything. But the show did have its good points. I haven't been a fan of these old-school Raws the last couple of times they've done one. Last year, uh, the old-school Raw, I think, was horribly placed. I think it came just a week or two before WrestleMania. So this year, uh, they kicked off the year with the old school Raw. And it was good to see the legends there. You know, who do we see this time around? We saw DDP, we saw Rikishi and Too Cool, the New Age Outlaws, Money Inc., uh, Nikolai Volkov, Bob Backlund, Sergeant Slaughter, The Godfather, Mean Gene Okerlund, Jake the Snake Roberts, and Rowdy Piper. Jake the Snake Roberts was a huge surprise at the end. I thought that was great the way he came out in the main event because when I saw DDP at the show, I said to myself, it would be so cool uh, since DDP is there, you know, he can really, you know, WWE should be able to bring in a Jake Roberts or a Scott Hall. If DDP's with him, you know, there shouldn't be a distrust or anything like that. You know, DDP will keep him in line. So when I saw DDP there and neither one of the other guys, I was a little bit disappointed. So at the very end of the show, for the very last thing we see, is to have Jake the Snake Roberts do a run-in. That was fucking awesome. Good for Jake the Snake Roberts. I hope this might lead to a Hall of Fame induction for him this year. Maybe even a spot in the Royal Rumble match, just for nostalgia reasons. I would like to see that. So I'm hoping this appearance on Raw tonight by Jake Roberts leads to that exact thing happening. It's just a shame we couldn't get Scott Hall out there. Maybe next time. But all in all, all of the little segments they did with, uh, you know, a lot of the legends, I thought were all pretty well done. I really liked the Too Cool match. You know, Scotty Too Hotty for an old man now looks great. He can still do the worm just like he did yesterday. Even Grandmaster Sexay is fucked up as a life as he has had. He even looked in decent shape. And by the way, didn't Raw look like one big fucking rehab facility? There was a ton of alcoholics on that show tonight. I mean, can we get any more guys with fucking problems out there. Ric Flair, Grandmaster Sex A, Jake Roberts, you know, probably a few others, but goddamn. But I'm just kidding. If the WWE can rib Lillian Garcia on her horse face, then I can rib these motherfuckers for being alcoholics. But there was really only two main angles that took place tonight on Raw, and I want to start with one guy in particular, John Cena. 
Have you noticed lately that we have not seen John Cena a whole hell of a lot on Raw in the past few weeks? Last week he wasn't even on the show. The week before that it was a stupid-ass Christmas episode. And this week it was one and done. He came out there and interrupted the Ric Flair, Randy Orton bullshit, strutted around with Nature Boy after the confrontation, it went to commercial, and you never heard from John Cena again. And if memory serves, go back to the past couple of Raws. Is it just me or does it seem like Daniel Bryan and CM Punk are alternating weeks uh, main eventing Raw? So all this seems a bitch and fucking cool it. It's WrestleMania time. There's a ton of big stars in the WWE right now. John Cena is just another guy. He and Orton both came out in the opening segment. They did their little thing and it was over. They weren't overused. They weren't overpushed. They weren't in every fucking segment. They weren't in the main event. They were in the beginning of the show and that was it. Stop your bitching. We finally got our first look at uh, Daniel the Dumpster Drossy coming out with the Wyatt family in his fucking janitor outfit. I thought that was hilarious. So Daniel Bryan looks like, you know, he's full on board as being a member of the Wyatts. He wants wants to contribute. He wants to help. He was backstage giving uh, Rowan and Harper some advice. So I know a lot of the internet chatter going around about Daniel Bryan joining the Wyatts has not been good, but this is actually pretty decent. You have to wonder where it's going to go. Daniel Bryan, even as a member of the Wyatts, uh, in a heel faction, the fans are still supporting him and cheering him. A lot of people have been telling me that they think Daniel Bryan is just joining the Wyatts to get to the WWE title. I can completely see uh, that scenario playing out. I can see it going a couple of other ways, too, but this one seems the more likely. I mean, here we are in the first week, and Bray Wyatt is already kind of, you know, putting some pressure on Daniel Bryan, saying, no, you're not going to team with either one of those guys. You're going to team with me. I'm in charge. It's like, you know, it's almost like there's dissension right off the bat here. So there's no way, with as over as Daniel Bryan is, uh, that he is going to remain with the Wyatts, like I said, a year from now. This is probably, you guys are probably exactly right. This might be a way uh, to help get him to the WWE title or the spot that he's he wants. I don't know if Daniel Bryan is going to win the Royal Rumble. You know, he could maybe use the Wyatt family to help him eliminate a lot of guys, and then at the end, he turns on them and eliminates them, and he wins the Rumble or something like that. Or he can stick with them all the way until WrestleMania, using them to get to the match, and then dumping them there. I don't know. It can go a million different ways. I, for one, actually don't care, and I am not on board with uh, anybody that's complaining about this uh, this storyline. This is good. This is a high-profile storyline. It's main event or semi-main event every single week. This is not a Daniel Bryan burial. This is not a Daniel Bryan de-push. I think this is just another dimension of Daniel Bryan's character. It's showing his versatility and his range. The WWE might be sort of stupid, but they're not all the way stupid, and we all see how over Daniel Bryan is. And I know I've been saying it for weeks and weeks and weeks, but Daniel Bryan will have his moment again. If the WWE wanted Daniel Bryan out of the title picture, they would just do with him what they're doing with Dolph Ziggler. But no, the WWE recognizes Daniel Bryan's popularity, and even though I do understand the fans' frustration to a degree about him not being involved in the title picture. I can still look at Daniel Bryan's spot in the company and the career and the storylines that he's in right now, and he is doing just fucking fine. So take a Valium and relax. Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman also showed back up. They get in a ring, start cutting a promo, and fucking A, poor Mark Henry. It's like... Last week, they turned Mark Henry into a piece of shit, and this week, they lit the piece of shit on fire. Mark Henry comes out there last week and gets the crap beaten out of him. He comes out there this week, gets no offense in whatsoever. Brock Lesnar just takes him down and snaps his arm. So what does that mean? Is Mark Henry hurt again? I mean, if he's going to have a broken arm, he's going to be off TV. Whether he's hurt or not, you know, you have to sell the broken arm. So he's not going to be able to compete. It makes me think that he's either, number one, taking time off, or number two, is legitimately hurt. I hope he doesn't miss uh, WrestleMania. And whatever Mark Henry's deal is in reality, I hope he's going to be okay, and I hope he gets well soon. So as poor Mark Henry's laying there in a fucking heat, Brock Lesnar and uh, and Paul Heyman start to leave the ring, and out comes the big show. We've actually heard uh, of rumors of a big show and Brock Lesnar match, and I'm guessing this must be for the Royal Rumble. Now, I can kind of see why they're doing this. They don't. They almost don't have time to put Brock Lesnar into another feud, uh, but they can give him a match, so it's probably going to be a one-shot deal with Big Show. Uh, Brock Lesnar is obviously going to destroy Big Show and go on to challenge for the WWE title and probably be involved in a pretty high-profile main event, semi-main event at WrestleMania. But I was actually laughing at the segment because, uh, you know, should Brock Lesnar really be trusting Paul Heyman in this situation? Do we not remember 2002? When Big Show decided to challenge Brock Lesnar, all of a sudden, Paul Heyman was like, holy crap, you can't beat this guy. And he fucking turned on Brock Lesnar and helped Big Show win the WWE title at the Survivor Series. When the Big Show's music hit, if I was Brock Lesnar, I would have turned 
turned right around and stared right through Paul Heyman and made sure that he wasn't fucking in on this and about to turn on me. Now, we know that's not going to happen this time. Paul Heyman's not going to leave Brock Lesnar for the big show. Big show is going to be put in front of Brock Lesnar for Brock to destroy probably at the Royal Rumble and move on to the big plans that they have for him this year. But still, these men have met many times in the past, and other than Big Show's one moment against Brock Lesnar when Paul Heyman turned on Brock and helped him win the title, uh, Brock has beaten the shit out of Big Show every other time uh, that they've faced each other. As a matter of fact, haven't they faced each other at the Royal Rumble before? Let's see how good my memory is here. Was it 03? Was it right after... Yeah, it was 03, because I think Brock won the fucking Rumble, and he went on to challenge Kurt Angle at WrestleMania, right? So Brock is going to fucking own the big show, but I do have to give the segment credit. That was a pretty cool brawl, and Brock can fucking sell. The way he let the big show toss him across the ring like that, I mean, Brock is such a big, badass monster, and I, and I was actually, you know, I was impressed uh, with the way Big Show heaved him across the ring like that. You know, I hope they can have somewhat of a decent match at the Royal Rumble. I'm guessing that Brock can still F5 him. He's got to be able to F5 him. You're not going to beat the Big Show with a roll-up. you got to hit your finisher on that motherfucker, so it should make for a pretty good moment at the Royal Rumble, and it can help get Brock Lesnar over a little bit stronger going into uh, what appears to be his upcoming title match. But for the most part, I'm not thrilled. So far, it looks like we have Brock Lesnar in the Big Show and John Cena and Randy Orton. Am I right about that? Judging from the angle on Raw, to me it would seem obvious that this would be a match at the Royal Rumble, but with Brock's fucked up contract, who the hell knows? But he's going to have to work a few more fucking dates. If they're really going to put him in the title picture, Brock needs to be around at least for this pay-per-view, the next one, and WrestleMania, and as many Raws in between as possible. I don't want him working the Rock schedule. He's not fucking making movies. He's got to put a little bit more time in here for the good of the fans and the good of the business. The main event on Raw saw CM Punk take on the third member of the Shield that he has not yet defeated. He's defeated Ambrose and Rollins in previous weeks, and now he's got to take on Roman Reigns. We know they're teasing dissension in the ranks of the Shield. All three of them were on Piper's pit. Dean Ambrose got to get face-to-face -face with Roddy Piper and cut a promo with him. That was a great rub for Dean Ambrose. I'm sure he was thrilled uh, to be on a Piper's pit and work with uh, Roddy like that. And Piper was out there doing his thing and talking, and the funniest thing was when he pinched Roman Reigns' cheek. I don't know if the WWE wanted him to do that. I'd be very surprised if they told him to pinch Roman Reigns cheek but he did it and it was fucking adorable so we fast forward now to the main event the New Age Outlaws introduce uh, CM Punk uh, which was funny they were so out of breath Billy Gunn looked like he was about to pass out out there even CM Punk was giving him shit for it in the ring I think JBL did on commentary too but when they introduced CM Punk I'm like why the fuck are the Outlaws introducing CM Punk I know Road Dogg said he was under the weather so maybe they couldn't really wrestle in a match but this seemed like a strange place to have them uh, introduce do CM Punk. I know they did the run-in in the Piper's Pit earlier too, which I thought they were oddly placed. I'm like, why are they there? So the only thing I could think of in my head was another guy we really didn't see much of tonight or any at all was Triple H. And if they have plans for a CM Punk and Triple H match at WrestleMania, it would seem only logical that Triple H would have the Outlaws do some dirty work for him and turn on CM Punk and help Roman Reigns beat him. I think we all knew Roman Reigns was probably going to win this match tonight. You know, CM Punk wasn't going to go through all those guys, especially Roman Reigns. He's the one that looks like his going to separate from the group first. He's the one that the WWE has big plans for, and a victory over CM Punk is just one more logical step to help building this guy, so I knew Punk was going to lose. And for the most part, considering how many guys were surrounding the ring, that was a semi-clean victory for Roman Reigns, and I like the match. I think this guy's going to be great. I hope WWE doesn't fuck up the push, and I think Roman Reigns is going to be a lot better at being Ryback than Ryback is. And look for Reigns to have a Diesel or Kane-like performance in that Royal Rumble. You can almost smell it. Every time they're trying to get a big guy like this over huge they have him toss out like a fucking dozen guys in the rumble Batista is going to be in this thing as well. Now, I'm kind of bummed out that they uh, announced Batista for the Royal Rumble because he's coming back the week before the Royal Rumble. Why don't you make that something that Batista can fucking talk about when he gets there? Plus, you'll only be a week away from the Rumble by that point. Your card will be mostly set. Most of the names for the Royal Rumble will be announced. And having Batista toss his name at the very last minute might give fans that little extra incentive to buy the Royal Rumble. I don't think it's really any harm done that they announced Batista for the Royal Rumble right now, but if he's about to come back and he's going to appear on on Raw the week before the Rumble, why don't you just let Batista fucking tell the fans that he's going to be in it? I'm guessing we're also going to see Sheamus in this thing, too. Do you guys agree? I think he's uh, basically 100% and can come back to work anytime. Uh, they're probably just holding him off for the Royal Rumble. As far as who's going to win it this year, you know, I just don't know. When you look at the names are, that are in it, if John Cena and Randy Orton are not in it, uh, because they're wrestling for the title match, although maybe on the show, let's say John Cena loses. Randy Orton retains the title by, and so, by some bullshit. John Cena gets screwed, something like that, and then, I don't know, one of the participants gets attacked 
backstage and, you know, they go up to the person in charge, whoever the fuck that is. Is it Kane? Is it Brad Maddox? Is it Vicky Guerrero? Is it Booker T? Is it Vince? Is it Triple H? Is it Stephanie? Who the fuck is in charge? They go find whoever's in charge and say, hey, you know, you lost somebody. You know, they're supposed to go out in the ring in just a couple of minutes. Their, their number's almost up and we don't have a replacement. And maybe the guy who's in charge looks off camera and says, hang on a second. And he runs off and, you know, and then a couple minutes later, uh, John Cena's music hits and he comes out to the ring and he's in the rumble. But anyway, if Brock Lesnar and the Big Show are also also not going to be in the Royal Rumble. What sort of names does that leave you for the Royal Rumble? You know, the only big top stars that could potentially win this and get a title shot at WrestleMania 30 would be CM Punk, uh, Daniel Bryan, Batista, or fucking maybe the returning Sheamus. Who else in the match do you think could win that Royal Rumble? This almost makes me think Daniel Bryan may very well be involved in the finish with this thing, and hey, they really want to push Bray Wyatt, right? I mentioned last week, what if Daniel Bryan and Bray Wyatt are the last two guys in the Rumble? What if Bray Wyatt wins the Royal Rumble? What if it's Bryan and Wyatt and Bryan goes flying over the top rope? Or maybe he sacrifices himself for the good of the family and hops over the top rope himself. Maybe Bray Wyatt orders Daniel Bryan as the leader of the Wyatts to get the fuck out of the ring and let him win the Royal Rumble. And Daniel Bryan says, suck my dick, and attacks Bray Wyatt and tosses his ass over the top rope. So you just never know. There's an endless amount of possibilities for the Royal Rumble and WrestleMania, and all we can do is collectively hope that the WWE doesn't fuck any of this up. So that pretty much does it for Raw. There's a couple of other things I want to talk about that a few of you have mentioned to me. Uh, we also saw the big announcement tonight on Raw uh, that the WWE is going to have some sort of big press conference, I think, on Wednesday uh, where they're going to announce a big industry-changing announcement. Uh, this is obviously probably going to be the WWE Network, which they've been advertising for what seems like at least three years now is finally getting launched. And I did hear the story about how the WWE is going to play Benoit footage. A lot of people wanted to know my opinion on the WWE using matches with Chris Benoit. Now, from what I read, the WWE plans on having a disclaimer before and after any show that Chris Benoit is featured on. And I think this is completely fair. I actually don't have a problem with this at all. It's been about seven years now since this took place, the biggest tragedy in the history of wrestling. Uh, and Chris Benoit was such a huge star the WWE Network needs content. There are a lot of shows and pay-per-views that Chris Benoit competed on that the WWE you know, wants to use for this network. And I don't blame them. If they want to show an old Raw or if they want to show an old pay-per-view, they shouldn't have to worry, you know, about fucking deleting out Chris Benoit's matches. So I think if they want to play the matches on their network with a disclaimer first, I think that's fine. Fans know who the fuck Chris Benoit is. All you have to do is Google his name or type him into YouTube and you can find his countless amount of matches it's not like he's going away. The WWE, I think, is doing, you know, the right thing. Hey, at least they're putting up a disclaimer. Hey, you're about to see a match involving the motherfucker that killed his family and himself. They're not going to glorify Chris Benoit. I doubt they're going to show all of his great title victories and things like that. But there, if there's a tag match here or there, or if there's some four horsemen footage, or if they want to show the match, you know, where Triple H tore his quad, or where Randy Orton won the World Heavyweight title, or something like that, they should be allowed to do so. So, like I said, as, as long as they warn every everybody before and after and uh, they don't glorify Chris Benoit then I don't think I really have a problem with it at all and a little bit of quick Wrestlemania 30 thoughts here uh, we saw Roddy Piper on the show tonight and I did read some shit on the internet about how the WWE is talking about uh, involving Roddy Piper and Hulk Hogan uh, together in some way at Wrestlemania 30 in a match against each other or in a tag team match on opposite sides maybe Hogan tags with Cena and Piper tags with a top heel in the company and they recreate the Wrestlemania 1 main event here is something that is going to surprise you. I, good mic work, yes, you are about to hear me right, would actually love to see that happen. I have made peace with the fact that we are going to see Hulk Hogan back in the WWE any day now. I've had my issues with Hulk Hogan. I've expressed how much he's disappointed me as a wrestling fan in my life, but I got to come to terms with the fact that he's back. It's WrestleMania 30. It is a huge deal for wrestling fans. 30 year anniversary of the show that basically changed the course of wrestling. If they want to do a throwback to WrestleMania 1, I am on board with it. I have no problem at all uh, seeing that happen, even if it means Hulk Hogan wrestling. 
we know the match is going to be bad. If Hogan and Piper have a singles match against each other, the match is going to be horrifying. But if it's a Legends match and it's just to take the fans on a nostalgia trip, I don't have any problem with that at all. Back in WCW, uh, the Slamboree pay-per-view used to do the same thing. They would have a Legends match. They would even make the match in black and white uh, on the pay-per-view. Uh, Vern Gagne, I think Nick Bogwinkle, uh, Wahoo McDaniel, lots of guys participated uh, in these Legends match in WCW. You know, they're not athletic, you know, masterpieces and great competition. They're just, you know, a bunch of old farts going out there doing all their old shit. And I think if Hulk Hogan and Roddy Piper want to go out there and have some sort of moment at WrestleMania 30 and pay homage somehow to WrestleMania 1, I have absolutely no problem with that whatsoever. I will be on board, I will support it, and I will not complain about it. And when Hulk Hogan finally does come back, I'll welcome him back with somewhat open arms. But as soon as he's gone again, the gloves are off, bitch. So that's it for me for this week. Uh, one final thought before I get out of here. Please keep uh, Mae Young in your thoughts. A lot of you, I'm sure, are aware or have read that I guess she's not doing well. She's 90 years old now. I think she was in, hos in the hospital, and she's back home now and suffering from kidney failure. Uh, this is probably going to be the end for Mae Young. We'll probably read about her death uh, in uh, just probably a few days. Kidney failure actually... Uh, I'm actually relieved. It's a it's a very peaceful way to die uh, for an old person. Mae Young is just going to die at home. She was an icon, a pioneer, an absolute legend in women's wrestling. And all of my thoughts, positive vibes, and best wishes are with Mae Young and her wonderful family during this difficult time. We love you, Mae. We love you. Until next week, peace.